Thanks for staying with us. 551 schools in KwaZulu-Natal have been affected by the severe rain and flooding, and 98 will need mobile classes. This is according to the provincial premier, Sikhe Sigalala. There are schools that are completely damaged, while others have partial damage. What precautionary measures will be put in place? Let's find out now from KZN Education, MEC, Kwazi Mshengu. Thank you so much for your time, MEC. We do appreciate it. Speak to us about how dire the situation is with regards to the damage of the over 500 schools that was reported by the Premier earlier this afternoon. Well, the situation is quite dire and uh, we have really been disrupted in the education sector. Uh, not only are our schools damaged, uh, but also we now have to focus on issues of psychosocial support um, restoring or uh, replacing the, the lost material, teaching material, dealing with the issues of inaccessible schools. So it's quite a heavy disruption that uh, we have suffered in the Department of Education. But in terms of the schools, we can confirm that indeed 551 schools uh, have reported the damages of one sort and the other. And there are those that have reported um, um, heavy damage uh, that, that has been suffered. Uh, of these 551, there are also 101 schools where we are experiencing uh, issues uh, or challenges of access uh, and therefore they will be, in our view, partially accessible by, by Tuesday. Uh, in, in, in this case, we will find out that there are learners who are on the other side of the river uh, where, 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 where the bridge has been swept away by floods and therefore those learners cannot access schools and uh, can only be accessed those that are on the site where the school is located. So we've identified 101 of such schools and uh, it will indeed be affecting our teaching and learning as well as attendance. Um, the 90 schools that have reported uh, to be in need of mobile classrooms, uh, the team in the DOE is, a, is hard at work to make sure that uh, we are providing such, at least they're starting from Tuesday. Um, so th those are the things that uh, we have really suffered in terms of uh, the, the education sector in the province. Mm, really such a sad and dire situation, MEC. Um, I want us to uh, speak about, um, you know, how many learners have actually been affected in all of this. Because if you're saying it's over 500 schools that have been damaged, 100, over 100 schools that um, are inaccessible at the moment, how many learners have actually been impacted by this? Well, the preliminary figures indicate that uh, just over 271,000 uh, learners uh, will be or have been affected. But obviously, as schools open on Tuesday, we will then get more accurate figures uh, of how many uh, learners uh, are actually affected. So, sorry, MEC, uh, sorry, to interject. sorry to interject. I, I didn't hear correctly, or I'm hoping I didn't hear correctly. How many learners have been affected? Our preliminary figures indicate that it's 271,000 uh, learners. Uh, you will know that in the province we have 2.8 million learners attending our schools. So the, the 251 schools, um, in terms of our prelim preliminary figures, indicate that uh, 271,000 learners uh, have been affected. And I'm saying that um, that number may change depending on the attendance that, that we'll have to, to count uh, when the schools uh, open on Tuesday. Uh, in terms of fatalities, uh, we can confirm that uh, 44 learners have lost their lives, uh, as well as one educator. And that number indeed may increase uh, because uh, there are a number of people who are still unaccounted for. So we, we are quite uh, really dealing with a situation that keeps on evolving every day. I want us to speak about um, the issue of uh, schooling needed, needing to commence on Tuesday. Um, surely it's going to be very difficult to set up these mobile classrooms and also to get learners into any kind of um, school or structure, um, given the fact that you have over 500 schools that have been damaged. This is going to seriously impact teaching and learning until there's some kind of plan uh, to either repair these damaged schools or to find alternative ways um, to get these learners into classrooms. Uh, definitely teaching and learning time will be disrupted uh, from Tuesday. Uh, and up until, as we correctly say, that we're able to 
deploy all these uh, necessary mobile classrooms. But uh, there are schools, for example, that are not in need of mobile classrooms, but they can't be accessed, as I said, in their own because uh, um, bridges have been uh, washed away, uh, roads have been damaged, so they can't be accessed by particular learners as well as educators. And that will lead into more disruption uh, taking place. We are looking into options um, uh, whereby we will look into certain schools that can accommodate learners that can that cannot access uh, their schools of origin. Um, so we are looking on on a number of uh, areas so that we at least avert a situation where there are learners who are completely uh, shut out of schooling because uh, of. Um, uh, inaccessibility uh, resulting from damage bridges as well as schools. But it's quite a, a difficult situation because some of the things uh, actually are not within the purview of the department. We'll rely on our sister departments like roads uh, and transport department uh, to make sure that um, they attend and prioritize at least uh, these roads that are leading to schools so that uh, we can get learners to schools as urgent as possible. Already, uh, you will recall that we closed these schools earlier uh, than uh, they were supposed to. So we have lost uh, quite a number of time, and uh, we, we don't want to continue losing more time because each and every day and hour in our, in our education system is quite important. Just lastly, um, you know, what's also concerning is the fact that many uh, of the schools in many of the areas, uh, not just in KZN, but across the country, also provide these um, nutrition programs that many of these learners depend on. Um, but just lastly, MEC, I'm wondering if you can put a cost on how much this is actually going to cost the department um, to repair these schools. I know this might be a national um, level question, but uh, do you have any idea how much this is going to cost? It's over 500 schools that we're speaking about? Well, uh, again, the preliminary figures indicate that we'll need uh, about 411 million uh, to attend just these schools uh, that, uh, that, that are affected in, the, in, this, in this particular period. Uh, on the eve of the NSNP, uh, the feeding scheme, as it is usually called, uh, again, uh, we are looking into options um, of delivering in, in, in schools where uh, it, they will not be accessible by road. So we will be engaging with SAPS as well as SNDF uh, to try and get some, some kind of as, uh, assistance in terms of airlifting uh, the, 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 the staff that is needed for learners at least to have a meal uh, 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 every day according to, to, to our standards. But also, as I indicated, all that we are faced with issues of psychosocial support because there are quite a number of learners that um, would have lost their parents, uh, would have lost their class, uh, classmates, would have lost their schoolmates. Uh, some are still uh, unaccounted for. So those are the things that uh, we need to focus on immediately when, 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 when the schools open. But also, we, we are putting all our schools on high alert in terms of uh, uh, late admissions, as we call it, because there are learners, for example, who, because um, they have lost everything, they will then be moved to relatives in a particular area. And we want those learners to be admitted in those schools immediately without uh, uh, further delays. Mm, MEC, sorry, I quickly have to ask you one last question. Come Tuesday, schools are supposed to open. What should learners and parents uh, do, especially if, um, for example, they haven't really been affected by the floods? Um, what's your message to them? Should they go to school or should they just assess the situation to see if their school has been damaged or not? Well, uh, we, we, our message is that uh, we will be opening our schools on, on Tuesday, and that those that uh, we cannot open, uh, obviously, communication will be given to that particular constituents of, of our learners as well as the educators. Um, tomorrow, the Premier will be giving a comprehensive state uh, of readiness, and uh, we will be giving more information in terms of that, because we are working literally overnight. Uh, to collate more statistics as well as uh, areas that are affected. And uh, some of the intervening measures that will be put in place um, for those learners that will not be able to access uh, schools because of uh, damage roads and bridges, uh, that again we should be able to announce it tomorrow once uh, finalized. The challenge is that uh, we are not working alone as a Department of Education. We have to rely also on other departments uh, in, in the province.